Welcome back, guys. So the day we've all been waiting for has finally arrived. So Project Lunar for the Sega Genesis Mini has been launched in a public beta form. So what we're going to do in this video today is run through the process, see if it's easy to do, and then test it out, add some games, all that good stuff. I'm sure we'll have a ton more content in the future testing different things out, but I just want to do the basics today. I have not messed with this at all as of yet. I have not installed anything. So I just want to go through it and see how easy it is uh, and allow you guys to follow along with me. So on the website, all links will be in the description. Uh, there's tons of information. There is a lot of troubleshooting guides. Just There's a lot to take in. But I think this is pretty straightforward. So we're just going to run through it. Hopefully we don't run into any problems. But here we go. The first thing we're going to need to do is download the installer. I have downloaded the 64-bit installer right here. If you scroll down, there's a lot more information, you know, credits, troubleshooting, all that good stuff, the people involved with this. So if you need to refer to any of this, there's FAQs, go ahead and jump on over here. But what we want to do is just download that installer and get going. So I already have that downloaded. You will get this uh, installer package right here, the Project Lunar uh, 64.msi. That's the version I downloaded. Install that. It'll take a moment. Uh, you'll probably have to give some permissions and whatnot, and then you will have this Project Lunar desktop application. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Now, back on the website, just real quick, there is a section that gives you like information on how to install everything. The biggest thing to note is you cannot, you cannot use the USB cable that came with your system. The USB cable that came with your system does not allow data transfer. So you will have to find another one that works. Luckily, I do. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go through the process. I'm gonna be using the cable that came with the True Blue Ultra Drive. I did have to go through and uninstall that from my system because I wanted to make sure there was no conflicts here. Um, this is the preferable way for me. I know some people like to have the uh, True Blue stuff going because it's just plug and play for the most part. But with that, you did have to install some stuff. So we're gonna be following this guide here. So we do have the Project Lunar application open. When you hit install and you don't have a console um, set up on here yet, you didn't follow through this and you click yes, would you like to open our interactive how-to help guide? It's gonna go through the same stuff that the website shows. So as you see here, that's pretty nice that they did it this way. Remove all cables from your system. Okay, I have already done that part. So we're gonna go ahead next. Ensure power switch is in the on position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Step three, hold down the reset button. I'm holding that bitch down. Whilst holding the reset, plug in the PC connected USB to your cable. Must be data enabled. The bundled cable does not work. So make sure you get one that works. Just make sure it has data uh, transfer. Let's see, keep holding reset, plug it. Okay, we gotta plug it in to the PC. So I'm gonna do that now, holding the reset. Uh, the LED will flash off and back on. Once the LED has flashed back on, you can let go after a second. The install process will now begin. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So that was the last step on the tutorial. So here we go. Installing Project Lunar. It's just a doing it. Downloading the payload. This could take a little while, so we're going to give it a moment and just let it do its thing. So we'll be right back after this part is done. But so far, it, it, very simple. Download the package. Make sure you have a data enabled cable that plugs into the back of your system. Have that, you know, follow the steps. Easy peasy. Okay, so for me, that took about six minutes, give or take, and the installation is complete. So let's go ahead and finish this up. Click OK and then click finish. So now we're gonna wanna do some game management. So I've been reading up on this, uh, following some information out there. And from what I'm hearing, uh, if you just wanna add games to the internal memory here, you're gonna have to be careful because we can only put so much. Uh, you can't add the entire library of games to the system. Uh, if you do, you're gonna run into some issues. You can add about, a hundred games or so somewhere around that i'm only going to add a handful to the internal memory if i can so let's go ahead and open up the game manager 
see how that works. Okay, initializing local data. Let's see how this goes. Welcome to Project Lunar. Thanks for installing. Before you continue, we would highly recommend you back up your NAND uh, backups to a safe location. You can do this by clicking Tools Advanced Export Backup. Let's do that first. So Tools Advanced and Export. A sync is required. Yes, let's uh, let's do the sync. We'll let that sync and then we'll do the backup. So as you see, we don't have a ton of space to play with on this system. Um, so that's why we're not gonna be able to add like a ton of games, right? So let's go ahead and go to tools, advance, export backup. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's put that on the desktop for now. Backup exported. So that took a second there. Um, don't trip, it did say not responding for a second, but we're good. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and add some games to the system. Since we're using the internal memory, like I stated earlier, we cannot add the full library of games. So I'm only gonna do a small selection to just demonstrate this working. You can also use a USB drive. We'll have to go through that process later. I just wanted to get through this to see how it works and then just start diving into the other things that we're able to do with this because we can add, you know, RetroArch cores, IPS patches. There's all sorts of options here, but I just wanted to go through this and get some games on here and just see the magic happen. So we're gonna go ahead and click add new game. We have to do this one at a time. So I believe I set up uh, Genesis games. Here we go. So I have a handful of games. Ah, Shaq Fu, why did I put that in there? Okay, I'm gonna add Snow Bros. So I'm gonna open that. Um, we can go ahead, let me see. Uh, get game information. So let's click that. You can use Screen Scraper. Um, I believe who else is on there? The game database. So we'll we'll leave it at Screen uh, Scraper right now. See what kind of information pops up here. Scraper matches. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and go with that. We got the little uh, hourglass there. Let's see. Load spine art. Load box art. Okay, we're good. We're gonna add that game. So that's been added. You see it's on our list here. Let's go ahead and add another uh, Turtles Hyperstone Heist. So there's that. Let's get game information from the screen scraper. If that doesn't work, you can always uh, use the other one. US Mega Drive. You get that hourglass, just give it a second so it loads up the information. You could go through and edit this stuff if you want, but so far uh, it's it's looking pretty good. Got the art right there, the spine as well. We'll add that one. Uh, what else? Is that one on there? Yep, it's right there. Once we add all these games, let's, oh, we'll do uh, Sonic 3. Um, you will have to sync it. Like right now, we're just adding it to the list of stuff that we want to add. This isn't adding it to the system yet, so we still have to go through that process. But I just want to get these handful of games. That that looks good. Like I said, if something doesn't look good to your liking, you can, you can edit it, but I, I'm... I'm digging what I'm seeing so far with the descriptions. Everything is fine. So I, I really like that they did it this way. That That is nice. Uh, Bart vs. Space Mutants. Screw it. Let's get that one too. Get game info. I'm just making sure I'm picking the US. I just kind of want everything to, to match. Okay. That's fine. That one's on there. Yep. Splatterhouse, and then we'll do Splatterhouse 3. And we will sync it up and check it out, make sure everything works. So we've added everything that we want for now. Like I said, we could add some more stuff, but we're just gonna keep it simple for the purpose of this video. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and click sync. Do you wanna sync now? Hells yes. Sync is in prog progress. So we're gonna give this a moment to load up all the stuff that we've added. It is uploading. So it looks like that just took a few seconds because it was not that many games. So we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this, just power off, unplug it, and I'm gonna plug it in and go ahead and check it out make sure everything worked. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay guys, so on initial boot, this is the screen we are greeted to. So far, so good. Looks like this is gonna work. We're gonna test out these games in a moment. On the screen, we have a few options. We could jump into Project Lunar, which is just gonna be our regular front end with our Sega Genesis games. You have RetroArch. You also have Emulation Station. The one cool thing, 
whatever you're on, if you press start, you could put auto boot to set or turn it off. Um, pressing start does that. So I have it set to Project Lunar. Every time I boot up the system, it's just gonna go straight to that. We're gonna have our Sega Genesis game. So that's a nice little option you have there. Pressing A will jump into that, but let's take a look at the settings real quick by pressing B. So toggle splash screen. There's a bunch of stuff here. We're not gonna go through all this. I'm gonna have to jump into it a little bit more. We can mess with the CPU speed. Uh, that is one cool thing. So there you go. A lot of things we can mess with. I'm not really gonna mess with it now. Some of the options, like it says, is USB only. Uh, but there you go. A lot of interesting things to mess with. You would press start to save and reset. So let's go ahead and back out. Just jump into Project Lunar. So I'm hitting A. That did take about two seconds to load, but hey, that's all right. I'm already seeing, I'm already seeing my Snow Bros is on there. That is nice. So our games did transfer over with the box art. That's really cool. Pressing B, we get the spine art. Everything transferred over correctly. That is really cool. This is mostly what I wanted this for. It's to just add a handful of games. I don't need thousands of games on this thing. I don't want NES games on this thing. I don't want arcade games on this thing. Will I test all that stuff? Sure. Why the hell not? But for me, I mostly just wanted to add a handful of Genesis games. I'm gonna be adding some more later, but for this video, I just wanted to demonstrate it working with a handful of them. Um, some of these are games I really wanted to add, like the Splatterhouse and uh, Hyperstone Heist and Snow Bros. But let's go ahead and jump into one of these, see if it boots up and works. Because if it doesn't, we got some problems. So there we go, game start, huh? And there it goes right into it. Let's test this out a little bit. Oh man, this is what I'm talking about. So you don't even have to have the, the Asian released versions or the Japanese released version to get Snow Bros. You could just add it. That is awesome. Let me go ahead and uh, get out of this. Our save state should work too. So let me go ahead and save something there. The game will be reset. Let's reset it and then uh, go ahead and jump back into that menu. Our save state's right there. So let's load it. Just test that out real quick. And there we go, right back into it. Awesome stuff, man. This is exactly what I wanted, guys. I wanted it to work just like the original front end with the same options, no frills. I don't need anything crazy. I know we have a ton of options of things we could mess with here, but I think a lot of people, like what I demonstrated here today is what a lot of people wanna do, and that is just to add some Sega games. But I know people will wanna go further than that, and hey, we will visit that in the future. So let's go ahead and get out of here. We gotta boot up another one, man. Turn the main menu. There we go. Let's get into Hyperstone Heist. This is awesome, guys. So having this set up using like the retro bit or the 8-bit wireless controllers, this thing is awesome. If you know, I, I like having these mini consoles that have like their specific games on them. I don't really like, you know, I have like every classic console that came out, the, all the minis. Like, why would I want to cross over and put games from each one onto the other? So that's why I dig this. Just putting Sega games on the Sega, having my NES, all this stuff. And this is exactly what I wanted. This is really cool stuff. So, hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me, checking this out. Um, if there's anything else you want to see, drop a comment down below. We will be doing some follow-ups, testing out some other features of this, but today I just wanted to make sure we got the basics out of the way, the most important thing in my opinion, and that was adding Sega Genesis games to the internal memory, uh, you know, and having them on that front end without anything wonky going on. So, hey, thank you. With that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom. Bye!